Hello and welcome. Today we're going to paint a Death Watch Terminator. So here we have the Terminator, and uh, I've actually ordered a couple custom pieces that I put on here from Shapeways for the Death Watch. Um, a nice chapter symbol for the Blood Angels, as well as a Death Watch shoulder pad and a small Inquisition icon on his power fist. Jump in here and uh, start right off. So I'm gonna start out with some Vallejo Black Primer, Airbrush Primer. Um, this stuff is fantastic. I've become a real fan of it. And we're gonna mix that 50-50 with some Citadel Cantor Blue. Um, in real life, there's no black. Uh, so we're adding this together to create kind of a nice base color. And then of course, we're gonna thin down a little bit because the Citadel paints are very, very thick. So you're always gonna wanna work with something to uh, thin them out. So once we've got that set, we're gonna paint our nice blue black onto the miniature. And you can do this by hand, of course. Uh, you don't need to have an airbrush, but you know, for years and years, I turned my nose up at uh, using an airbrush for miniatures. And then I realized a friend of mine had been using them to do some base coating, and I thought that was amazing because using spray can primer can be difficult at the best of times and sometimes disastrous. So this really sold me on it, and I'm definitely gonna be using it a lot more, but this is the only point in the video where I'm actually using the airbrush. All right, now that we've got a nice blue-black base coat down, we'll just set this down and let it dry for a moment. Remember too, when you're airbrushing, you're going to be putting on a very light coat, and uh, you wanna make sure that you're getting in those light coats and not trying to overload it. So now we're gonna start out with our first layer um, of paint here. We're gonna do some edge highlighting with some Russ Gray. Now when we do this, we're going to make sure to thin this down and we're going to load up our brush, keeping a nice point, and we're going to use the side of the brush tip to do the edge highlighting. We're not going to try and use the tip because that's really hard to control and uh, can be difficult to put the paint where you want it. By using the edge, we're going to be able to follow along the hard edges and lines on the Space Brain models and uh, get a nice effect. Also thin this down with some airbrush thinner um, definitely like this over water. Water, of course, has its uses. I mean, it's a water-based paint, but I'm seeing it more and more as a way of creating a glaze than I am as just a flow improver. So using some kind of flow improver or airbrush thinner is really uh, my preference at the moment. So I always start with the back of the model because I feel like it's a good place to test a few things out and see how it's working uh, before I go into more detail and into more of the important areas like the face and chest. Once again, I'm just very much using the edge of my brush and the edge of the tip in all but the most detailed areas. I'm just following along the different armor pieces on the back here and uh, highlighting them up to a reasonable amount, sometimes going over them again to uh, give myself a nice layer. The trick here too is to get a good mid-ground between this and your highlights. If this color is too bright, you'll end up creating something that looks more like a Tron outline than a highlight. Um, in fact, this is the second time that I went over this particular model and primed it again because the first time I went way too far up the scale in value to a very light gray and it ended up looking very much like an outlined figure and I wasn't very happy with it. So I went back in and got some rust gray and uh, tried it again and I was pretty happy with the results. And so that's what we're watching right now. One thing you remember with your miniatures too is that you know, I'm very guilty of looking for a best practice step by step. And really what this is, is it's, it's a piece of art, like a canvas or pottery, and you really can use any technique that you can think of or that you can find and any kind of um, experimentation that you really like too. So I don't feel like you really have to follow a very strict set of instructions when doing this kind of work. What you want to be able to do is just be creative and expressive, you know, learn about basics of lighting, shadows, and really go from there. And if you've been watching a lot of YouTube, 
you know, there's a different way of painting these for every single painter out there. So you know, definitely, you know, find a style you like and go for it, but don't be afraid to try things out. And there's definitely a few things I tried out on this model, but I didn't really go to the extreme that they required. Uh, some of the highlights that we see later on the face uh, was kind of nice to kind of map those out and go through them and blend them back in, but I really could have done a lot more. Always take the time to look over your model too. Sometimes when I'm painting, I definitely will take the model and uh, give it a couple once overs to see you know what areas I want to do next or what spots I may have missed. Um, the other side of that coin is that often when I get done painting a miniature or I'm partway through, I really don't like it. So as long as you haven't you know really done something egregious, definitely put it down and uh, walk away for a little bit. For me, it's usually about a full day. You know, I finish a model, get it all based up, and come back the next day and then I like it. And I can kind of look at it and see what areas I want to improve and what areas I think worked out really well and then take those on to the next model. In this case too, we're also just painting one model for the benefit of this video. But uh, I tend to paint miniatures in batches, um, although five is really my limit. Uh, I can't do more than five without getting bored or rushing or you know trying to take shortcuts. So uh, I kind of cap myself at five miniatures and uh, I've gotten good results that way. Anything more than that, you know, unless it's very, very similar or you're much better at production lines than I am is, is kind of what I recommend. Also to note on this model too is that he's fully assembled and uh, I wouldn't normally do that. I actually have you know, gotten into the habit of breaking up my miniatures into sub-assemblies and pinning them to pieces of cork with a little bit of super glue and some armature wire and some accelerant. And it really does make life a lot easier when you come to doing some of these steps, uh, breaking up the colors like you know, for Death Watch, all their left arms are silver, so in, other than this model, I really was able to sit down and spray all those pieces black um, along with the one unhelmeted face that I want to do. Um, it also helps here too because one thing I haven't really talked about but you may notice is that when you're doing edge highlighting, try to move the model and not your brush hand. You know, once you find a good angle for laying down those highlights, just rotate the model around until it fits that angle. Upside down, inverted, whatever you need to do to kind of match the contours of the armor and also keep your brush hand uh, nice and steady for doing these edge highlights. And you'll see that more and more as the video goes on here. Coming in here and just doing some uh, light highlighting on the fingers of the right hand. Once again for Death Watch, all the left arms and weapons and everything are silver, so I'm not gonna go in and do those just yet. When you're following in these really detailed lines, you're going to be forced to use a bit more of the tip. But in this instance, I'm still just using the side of the tip. And uh, I do make a mistake here. I kind of end up running the paint a little thick into that area. But when you have a base color, um, as the one I have here, which once again is that 50-50 mix of Cantor Blue and Vallejo Black Primer, just, you know, I made a little bottle of it up so I have a similar mix for at least a unit or two at a time. Just pour a little bit of that out and go back in and correct it and I'll point that out once we get there. And once I get in here to the, uh, the chest and the face, once again this to be a little bit easier on the next models I do because the helmet will be broken out into a sub-assembly and I'll be able to really get into the neck and gorget area there to edge highlight them up. Remember too that when you're coming in and painting your miniatures, you want the focus to be most of the time on their face or their face and chest. So when it comes to highlighting this area, be really thorough, make sure to add a little bit more highlight at the end and really look at your miniature and see if your eye is continually drawn back to that point. Whenever there's a design or a piece of art, usually your eye follows a path that is intended by the artist on when you view their work. And so having that nice focal point in the face, because most of these are humanoid miniatures, uh, is a good way to keep people looking at your model and coming back to that center of attention. As you can see here, I'm starting to get into a rhythm of rotating the model quickly around and maintaining the position with my painting hand to get those edges. I'm working pretty well and uh, it really was a successful habit to get into when painting this miniature.
Now, oftentimes, if you're really following a strict lighting perspective, you won't have to do every single edge. You can force that viewpoint up by keeping the lower part of your miniature darker and less highlighted and actually trying to hit more of the upper edges and more of the edges as they head towards the top of the model. This will again draw the eye up the miniature and give it some perspective um, from the viewer's standpoint. Here, I'm taking a look at the model, see if I missed anything or if I want to lighten any other areas up right before I move on to the uh, next stage. So here we're going to grab some Ulta 1 Gray, which is a gray color for doing a lot of different work. For highlights, of course, it's really good and using it as it is. But whenever you have to base over a dark area to put a lighter color down, this is a great one to put down first. It really has great coverage. It's very, very opaque and it's a great underlayer without a lot of brush marks if you properly thin it to progress from there. And in fact, when I start working on his right shoulder for the Blood Angels chapter, I should have actually done this first instead of trying to layer up the multiple layers of red. It ended up being okay in the finished miniature, but it's definitely something that I'm going to change as I go forward. And here's that part where I said where I'm kind of experimenting now. I'm actually going in and creating some very bright highlights on the edges and the points of the armor around the face and chest. And what this does is these are the areas that really catch the light and really bring a lot of emphasis down to this area of the miniature. Now, I could have done a lot more with this and I could have gone in and actually blended this together and really utilized this effect in a much more uh, intense way, but I didn't. So once again, something I'm gonna make a little note of is as I go forward in my miniatures, this will be something that I actually work on a lot more. But instead of actually just following the complete edge, I'm looking where two edges meet or there's a point and I'm really trying to focus in on just the, the, the face and the chest and maybe a couple points along the knees and the back of the legs for when the model is being turned in someone's hand <clears throat> or it's wandering across the battlefield. So we let this dry a little bit. We're just taking a quick look at how those highlights came out. We're gonna move over some lead belcher and start painting the left arm and some of the metallic areas on the model. And one thing uh, I learned actually watching um, a streamer, and I can't remember his name right now and I feel really terrible about that, but uh, doing kind of a really wet dry brush on this area, you know, the idea is not to do a serious dry brush, but to just utilize some a lighter touch and you can see I'm actually pulling out some of the more uh, the less viscous material right there on the piece of paper and I'm just going over the areas in depth because I want a really nice intense smooth silver with only the very very deepest areas of the model left that original color to be the shadows and so forth so I'm really going to get in there and try and get this whole arm covered to represent the death watch chapter For this instance, I'm leaving kind of the palm of the hand and between the fingers and the lettering inscribed on that left shoulder. here on his assault cannon and just start layering up those areas. One thing to consider too is if you have recently bought miniatures or you're new to the hobby, oftentimes you can get a little paralyzed um, before you get started painting. Um, something this is this can be because you know maybe you've painted a bunch of miniatures and you've learned a lot of new techniques or maybe you have one that turned out really well or someone helped you paint it and you're, you're just scared about doing more miniatures and matching that standard. And remember, when it comes to any talent or hobby or ability in life, you know, it comes down to a lot of repetition. 
Um, you know, let's we can learn from Kung Fu Panda, right? The secret is there's no secret. You know, whenever you see something that says, oh, this is a trick that'll save you time, you know, it could be. But really try and keep in mind that to perfect that talent or any talent, especially miniature painting, you're gonna have to just get in there and do it. Um, do a lot of painting, do a lot of experimentation, watch streamers, watch videos. There are some amazing people out there who are fantastic and will really engage with you to give you tips and advice and to help you out. And then you can really find what your style is or what style you want to really you know, match and excel at. But you gotta paint those miniatures. If you happen to be in an insane asylum with a wallet like I am, you'll have lots of miniatures sitting around, either in boxes ready to come out or put together and assembled already to make your life really difficult when you finally come around to painting them. Now for the little sighting mechanism up on his right shoulder there, what I've done is I've actually based it with some of this silver and that was kind of an experiment. I wanted to go back in and actually put a red on it and uh, maybe a light red and see if I couldn't get some of that metallic sheen through. I'm not sure if I really accomplished that by the end of the miniature, but maybe next time I do something like that, I'll use some of the spirit stone red that Citadel creates for us. So back to our solution. This was the 50% primer, 50% Cantor blue. And I'm gonna go in now and just make a few corrections. So there's some areas, as the one I mentioned earlier right here, where I wanna go back in and just take that highlight down to its thinnest point, fix some of the areas on the feet. I always tend to um, overpaint down there a little bit on the toes and the back of the legs. And I'm just making a few corrections here and there. And I'll also go into the gun and kind of darken up some of those areas as well. Now we're going to do a final wash over the top of our armor highlights with a mix of Nuln Oil and Drakenhof Nightshade. And really what this is, is kind of a blue-black glossy wash and it's going to unify our highlights. So sometimes when your highlights come out, they can seem a little strong or you've got that drawn man appearance. Doing one, two, three, several glazes with different mixes and consistencies can really reunify those colors back together again and give you a nice harmony across your model. Miniature painters much better than I will often use this, tr this trick and technique over multiple layers of painting and washing to create a nice warm glow across their miniature. What I'm also going to do with this wash, because I think it'll work out really well for the silver parts, is I'm going to wash it over top of all of the armor that's been painted with Lead Belcher. This will give me um, that nice shadowed wash in there, and it will also add a little bit of a blue tint to the metal, and I think that'll be a little bit nicer than just using the black. Once again, this is an experiment, and we're really going for kind of that blue tone across the model to stay away from, you know, perfect black. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. I think one thing I would have done in retrospect, and what I'll do on the next miniatures, is actually come in on the weapon, especially its assault cannon, and uh, paint in a shadow in between the barrels with a mix of like black and Nuln Oil, just to give a lot of depth into that area, because right now I think it's a little bit flat. And also, I realized that I haven't been drilling out my barrels, so uh, once this video is done, I will definitely be going in there. So now we're gonna work on the Blood Angel's chapter symbol on his right shoulder. We're gonna go in there with some Mephiston Red. 
And this one is fairly thick here, so even after my transfer from the pot into the squeeze chopper. So I'm just going to kind of mix it in with some of the water that's on the wet palette there, which I definitely recommend that you get into and use. And I'm going to start layering up these reds. And obviously we're going over a very dark opaque color with a semi-translucent color right here. And uh, we're going to have to do it a few times to really get the effect that we're looking for. As I stated earlier, what I'll do from now on with these, I'll actually go over with some Ulthuan Gray or Celestra Gray first to just help block out some of the deep value and um, opacity of those under layers so that the top layer comes out a little bit brighter and cleaner. We're also going to hit a couple wires and hoses around his right arm and the rangefinder and uh, targeter on his right upper shoulder and back. Here I am just going over and starting to layer a little bit more paint onto that spot on that pauldron. Only because I'm, as I look at it and it dries, it will tend to blend down and you'll see more of that dark layer through it. So I definitely want to get in there and keep working that shoulder until I get that nice color. It is one, if not the only major source of contrast with the rest of the model. So I want it to be nice and bright. All right, so now that we've had that let that dry a little bit, we're gonna take a little bit of caribou crimson and we're gonna go over top of this to just give it a little bit of a dark red glaze and to get into some of those cracks and crevices around the corners of the pauldron there and underneath the chapter symbol. I tend to use wash and ink and glaze a little interchangeably and that's not a good way of progressing. So I'll try and be a bit better about that. We'll let this dry for a little while. Make sure you let your inks dry a little bit longer in your paints. It can take some time for inks to really get down because of their water content is so high. And what I've done here too is I've actually started to pull down some Evil Sun Scarlet and some Wazdaka Red, both from Games Workshop, and mixed them in a little bit with that original Mephiston to give myself kind of an intermediate layer. And what I'm experimenting with here is actually going to more of the open areas on the pauldron and painting in this lighter shade with the intent of washing it down with a watery mix of red, blending those together and just giving a little bit more interest and light variation across that element of the miniature. There's that. There's that, um, there's that Wild Rider Red sneaking in there too for a little bit of orange. Now, as the model becomes more and more completed and there's more areas to work on at any given time, I'll stop letting areas dry completely and I'll start working on a different spot in the meantime. So what I'm doing right here is I've actually taken some black and I'm going in and kind of thickening up these areas, a little bit of our blue-black mix, and just cleaning up some of the oversights from the lead belcher and deepening some of the areas of the shadow. Once again, I kind of would like to have gone back in between the gun barrels and thickened those up as well, but that's for next time. I'm also tracing the outline of the pauldron here with black as the Blood Angels is more of a black and red and white and I don't want this blue to be there from the rest of the miniature. I really want that strong contrast from the black and the red. 
just very carefully, very smoothly, with a nice consistency to our paint. I'm just gonna get that covered up. I'm also gonna hit the coils on the back of the legs here. And I don't think it's on camera, but uh, I did go back in there and give those a quick highlight too with some Celestra Gray, I believe. And once again, just a little bit more cleanup with our blue-black mix. On those feet, as I mentioned earlier, there was quite a bit of overspray and um, overpainting from our highlighting. Here's where I'm mixing in quite a bit of water just to go over top of that with a glaze of that red, just to unify those highlights together and uh, try and give me the effect I was looking for. I think it's a little subtle in the finished model, but once again, I learned a lot from the process and that's why I encourage you to do the same. Now I'm going back over the blood teardrop and I'm just kind of layering up a little gradient, quick and dirty over that teardrop. Now this is what I probably should have done with the entire shoulder pad. So grab the Celestra Gray, and I'm actually gonna paint the wings in with this color to get over top of the blue and red and give me a nice rich white. And as you can see, this is such a opaque paint that it goes on fantastic. It really provides the effect I'm looking for in one coat. And then you can see the drastic change when I go back over it in white. I'll take the opportunity to just put a little dot right on the bottom of the blood tier. some white fang and we're gonna drop that down and just mix in a little bit of our gray and then we're gonna go over top of those wings again just to bring them out nice and bright and as you can see that's a drastic change even right there from our Celestra gray undercoat and we're also gonna dot in our lenses and we're good to go on most of those areas now Also went back in, that was a bit of Eshin Gray right there, and I'm gonna put an edge highlight around the black pauldron there, because we definitely wanna grab those highlights, they're really beautiful. Make sure to do the outside and the inside of that frame right there. and gray just to highlight some of those black areas up around the assault cannon. There's some storm steel silver and I'm going to use this to go over top of all of the areas that were previously painted in lead belcher and washed down with our Nuln oil mix. I'm just going to put some very light highlights in along the barrels of the gun and all of the silver areas especially that left arm there. This is one of those areas where you may not think you're having a very big effect when you're going and highlighting up a silver like this, but I guarantee that it is very noticeable. And once you get into the habit of doing it and you start to see that final effect, you're really gonna love it and you're really gonna see the value and it'll really encourage you to take more time and go back into these areas. And I blew over this stuff when I painted when I was much younger and didn't do this. And uh, you know, now that I've come back to the hobby and really gotten back into it, I'm really seeing this with the value that it deserves and I definitely recommend it.
I'm also going to go in here and actually go over all of the rounded areas on the gauntlet and pick out the inquisitorial symbol, the skulls, and even the little rivets along the top of the glove there in the bottom of the, uh, the knuckles. And you can see from this shot here especially too that how much brighter and more defined those areas get when that storm of post silver is popping over the top. That's some Ushtabi Brown right there, Ushabti, sorry. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go in over his Terminator emblem on his knee with this base color. Once again, this is a really great base, uh, very opaque. It's great for defining these areas of bone, even over cost of dark armor and uh, getting a lot of the detail in there and a lot of the brightness that you need for working with this particular spot. I went back and forth right here because I wasn't sure if I wanted those crosses underneath it to just be the outline in bone or if they should be filled with blue or bone. So I kind of experimented back and forth here and something you can do on the model as well. Um, these paints end up drying very quickly and I think at the end I ended up going back in and filling them all out and I uh, really wanted that that full cross to stand out and since it was going to get a wash later anyways I still got that detail back out. So some screaming skull for the highlight. Pull a little bit of that out and just go over top of the face of the skull, the brow, the ridges around the eyes and nose, and the lower jaw, and the, the upper jaw and the teeth, and then picking out the edges of that cross. Now I'm going to take some Agrax Earth Shade and just pop in there to give it a nice brown wash. We're going to jump over here and we're actually going to paint his eye lenses in. And I don't tend to follow a hard and fast rule with eye lenses. I tend to paint them whatever the color is the best contrast against their armor color. So in this case, I went for some uh, Everland Sunset and then we're going to highlight it up from there. So I'm just being really careful, just enough paint on there on the tip to go in there and just smoothly paint in those lenses. Then we've got some flash kits yellow, and I'm just gonna put in a, a nice band of highlight. This highlight does cover most of the eye, but there still is a little bit of that Everland Sunset base coat because it does provide a little shadow. And then we're gonna hit this with some Cassandora yellow. So it's a really great color. It adds a lot of yellow in, and it also gives you the shading that you need. So I'm very much a fan of that one. And lastly, we're going to take a little bit of that white fang and we're going to just get a little tiny highlight in there just to bring the eyepieces out. Once again with the white scar here, and we're just going to pick out the final highlight on that emblem on the knee just to make sure it stands out. Now to work on the chest eagle, we're going to start with some Balthazar gold. And we're just going to get that nice and thick in there. Get all those icons and wings and all the feathers on the skull picked out. And this nice kind of brass color. And once again, you know, when you come to these areas, they're really your choice. Uh, I chose this because I wanted, there was a lot of, you know, silver steel on the model. And so I wanted to paint this in with some gold just to give it a little bit more of a contrast to the other armor. And I think at the end, it really does bring your eye back and forth between the chest and the face of the miniature. So I'm pretty happy with that.
We're gonna give this a wash with Nolan Oil just to take the shadows back out and to enhance them. And this is always the part of the model towards the end where the pile, the pots of paint start piling up around my model and I start having to clear them off and mix them because I'm doing lots of areas. While some areas are drying, I'm continuing to paint other areas. And that really helps me keep up my pace and my flow. Now we've got some Liberator Gold and we're just picking out the, once again, the same features on the skulls so around the eye sockets and the forehead and the teeth. And then the top of the wings there, some of the feathers and the bolts, and uh, just to get that nice and bright. What happened here at the end is that I started to look at the face and started to think that maybe I wasn't getting it as bright and as much of a focal element as I wanted. So I took some more rust gray and I took some, um, I'm not sure if that was Ulthuan gray or a little bit darker shade, and mixed them together to give myself a nice bright gray blue highlight. Add a little bit of thinner in here to get the flow of where I wanted it. And I went back over the face and I started with the back of the legs here as a test once again, just to bring a little bit of focus to the back of the model. Really this is just for when it's walking on the battlefield or someone picks it up and turns it around. And I jumped right in here to the helmet and started just taking out the, the highest highlights here. So I went over top of all of the brow, the eye sockets, the forehead, the grill around the mouth and the cheeks, and a couple areas on the underside of his chest and the very, very top of his knees, just to, just to imitate light catching those really high highlights. And uh, at the end, I was really pleased with this, and it really brought all that focal interest back into the part of the model that I wanted it to be on, which is really around his face and chest and always drawing the eye back to that area. So really playing with your contrast and your highlights and experimenting the model and coming back with washes or extra highlights or edge highlighting is really going to give you an effect that you're pleased with by the end and you'll really learn a lot from doing it. we finish up here, I really wanted to thank everyone for tuning in. We have lots more content coming. I uh, had a request for some Tyranna videos, so we'll try and work those in here pretty soon once I get a few of these Death Watch models under my belt and feel good about that. And one thing that's not in this video is the basing, which you'll see in the final photograph, and we'll put together a video on basing and you know, really what it means to create a base and to experiment with your designs and get that nice character-driven story built into that area because that's really what I see the base as operating as is kind of a little diorama finishes up your model and helps tell a story about where he is and where his travels have taken him and maybe what's going on you know putting in some icons and skulls and banners and you know, really tells a story and it's once in one more one of those areas that's easy to overlook but is really important so thanks again for your time here and I really appreciate that you tuned in and if you have any comments or critiques or suggestions, I'd love to hear about them and looking forward to that. And we'll have lots more videos soon. Thanks so much.